What are some major obstacles you face bringing Lonely Planet into digital multi-format publishing? I think um, the biggest challenge for us has been the, the legacy, I guess. Uh, not, not the legacy just of Lonely Planet, but the legacy of, of a publishing industry stretching uh, in this particular way for about 500 years since Gutenberg um, invented the movable type printer I guess and this is where this is where we what we face is is breaking down the barriers of of a of a very long standing way of operating and working um, so more specifically what that means is you know for for London Planet for you know for almost 40 years we've been creating books you know primarily and, and creating books in a particular way with a particular process and tools and workflows and, and roles and structure and culture um, that, that now have all been thrown up in the air in a way as, as new mediums and platforms come up that we need to, to start tackling, we realize that the only thing we know how to do is books, is printed books. Um, the lucky thing for Lonely Planet is that we've been in the mobile guides business for a, for a long time as well. So although they were actually manifesting themselves as books, they were still mobile guides. They, you know, they were still moving around. So, so at least in, in, in principle and essence, we understand um, where we stand. But, but, but in actual fact, the, the mechanics of getting those things out are very tricky and are challenging us, you know, in f all the way from the way we originate our content, which is originated primarily for a book, which then needs to be repurposed for a variety of other things. Um, and that poses a challenge, you know, the things that you create or generate for a book don't apply for an app or, or an e-book or, or anything else. And stripping those things out or changing or morphing or massaging that content to fit the different mediums, it's, it's a serious challenge. Um, and that's just for us. but. Most publishing, I guess. Right. What are a couple of things you're working on right now that you're really excited about? Um, so, well, I guess in a variety of fronts. I mean, we're still uh, innovating in books just as much as we ever have. I mean, we're still launching new series um, quite regularly. Um, our country guys, our brand new country guys, just just came out into the market, which are um, again yet another step forward in terms of how we do books, which is unbelievable. Um, we got a, a brand new app that just came out. Actually, in fact, it's coming out in the next few days, or so just come out, uh, which is an audio walking tour, which is the first app that we created with that content that originated from a book. So it's actually the first kind of digital only thing that we're doing. Um, and that's um, hopefully going to be a very successful thing for us, and, and I'm really excited about it. Um, and then I guess the other, the other piece, which is really important, um, um, for us is working out how to actually break down the barriers that I was just talking about you know how how do we originate content differently and uh, and store it in a different way and manage it in a different way and get it out into these mediums in a different way that allows us to be much more versatile and nimble and flexible um, and that doesn't lock us down to to a particular medium which then need to be repurposed for others you know it actually becomes much more agnostic um, and we've been working on that for the last 12 months and uh, We've had an enormous amount of success on it. So um, uh, a lot of our apps actually are coming from there, and a, a lot of the work that we're doing is actually being feeding from this uh, uh, content asset, I guess, that we're creating. So um, yeah, I guess long gone are the days of, of Word manuscripts. We're trying to really jump into a world of organized, uh, enabled content, I guess. Right, right. Um, one of your jobs at Lonely Planet is to train authors on new technology. Yep. What kinds of technologies should authors focus on learning? Um, <coughs> well, I wish there was a, a piece of technology called, you know, um, the flexible brain technology or something, because <laughs> that's, I think, one of the most important pieces, actually train yourself to be flexible and, and, and curious and, and inquisitive enough to actually explore as much as possible. It's very tricky to pin one down. Um, you know, I could say, you know, uh, learn to write on, on, on Wikimedia tools or um, learn to use handheld devices and mobile devices to collect geo-references or, or to take notes or to capture video or uh, uh, learn the different voices that you have across, you know, blogs and web and print and so forth. Uh, you know, there could be a number of things that you could try to expand yourself into as an author, but the most important one, to, to be honest, is, is that internal one that says, you know, I need to remain relevant, I need to remain curious, I need to remain, I need to keep exploring and experimenting with things um, so that nothing, you know, so, so, so this new world of publishing doesn't overtake me, you know, and I still, uh, and I still am useful, I guess, and, and connected to my to my eventual, my traveler in, in our case, or my customer, I guess. Um, so yeah, if I, if I had some words for authors, it would be 
keep being curious. I mean, don't, and that doesn't mean that, you know, this is a travel, travel with change. I mean, we, no one likes change in general. You know, we try to stick to it. I mean, this is kind of a really human condition. We, I guess I should say no one likes being changed. Yeah? Kind of, change is not that bad, but being changed. And this feels a bit like being changed. You know, it's kind of like it's coming on upon them rather than them being able to. Uh, but again, remain uh, curious and, and flexible and explorative, I guess. And finally, what do you think is more important to your consumers, ownership or access? Um, hmm. um, so I reckon the most important part for our consumers is actually to solve their problems, to give them amazing experiences. Um, so I guess I don't care what flavor it comes in. If it's uh, by accessing the data, by subscribing to something, uh, or by being free data, or by owning it, I think at the end of the day we need to. Con it's almost like a second step. You know, the first thing that I want to make sure that we do as, as as Lonely Planet is that we we continue to solve traveler's problems. We continue to uh, enable amazing experiences. We continue to uh, to help them get to the heart of a place and really you know appreciate it for what it is. How exactly do we do that? Is it through access to information or through uh, ownership of that information? Um, I guess it, it, it's going to continue to evolve and change depending on the formats, the mechanisms, the mediums that we deliver them by. Um, right now, I guess the main way of delivering is through ownership. So right now, they purchase either an ebook. Yeah. There's very few things that are. Um, I mean, on the web, we do provide a fair bit of access to information that it's free, I guess. Um, a thorn tree is an access place, you know, all our social networks are all access driven, so you don't have to pay for anything, you don't own anything, you're just part of, you know, a bigger piece. Um, maybe answering my own question, maybe both are just as important. Hmm. I don't know, it's a tricky one actually, I think it's a really tricky one, but again, as soon as we keep solving problems and providing amazing experiences, I think we, we're on the right path. Thank you very much for talking with me. No worries.